Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.8.2 .2 and Eagle Dynamics KA50 Black Shark 3 module. Welcome to Tutorial 3, Canon. Today we're going to take a little look at the 2A42 30mm Auto Cannon, fitted here on the right hand side of the fuselage. This is a fixed mount with a reduced degree of um, slew in azimuth and elevation. Um, this is designed to increase its accuracy, however of course it means you have to turn the helicopter for the most part if you want to engage the cannon. And as you can see it's quite tightly coupled to the right hand side of the helicopter. As such it can only slew to the left 3 degrees, uh, but it can slew to the right 37 degrees. It also has the ability to slew down 9 degrees. It has a 2,000 meter maximum range normally, uh, although against lightly armoured targets only, uh, it's only considered effective out to 1,500. Uh, it carries a mix of armour piercing and high explosive ammunition. Uh, you can fire it in a high or a low fire rate setting, with the high setting being approximately 600 rounds per minute and the low setting being 350. Uh, and you'll see inside we have a bunch of other settings as well. It can be coupled to the cheval, or it can be poor sighted for firing while in uh, on the move, basically. Uh, and so let's uh, jump into the cockpit, and we're going to take a little look at the uh, controls for setting up the cannon in the first instance. I'm going to hide the, the stick right now. Uh, everything is found on the primary weapons control panel here in the centre. You'll see that across the bottom we have the controls that, for the most part, control uh, the cannon. Uh, we have uh, the the weapon control switch. It can be in manual or automatic. In manual mode, the cannon is uh, bore sighted. It will only fire forwards. In automatic mode, it will slew to uh, point in the same direction as the cheval. You then have the burst fire uh, limiter with settings for short, medium and long. Uh, medium and long are the same in the case of the cannon. They are only different when you're firing rockets. Um, so short, which is what we have right now, will limit you to a burst of 10 rounds. Medium or long will put you on a 20 round limiter. You also have the uh, ammunition selection here. It's currently in high explosive. And the number of rounds remaining in the cannon is um, confirmed to you up here in uh, hundreds and tens. So we have 240 rounds of high explosive. If I flip the switch, we have 220 rounds of armor-piercing incendiary. I'm going to leave it in that setting for now. And then you have the, the uh, fire rate setting here, low and high. I'm going to put it into low. Low is quite useful for use against ground targets. High would only be used uh, in air-to-air -air normally. Uh, and again, low is 350 rounds per minute. High is 600. Uh, and then, of course, we have the master arm. In order to employ the cannon, master arm must be on. So I'm going to demonstrate an attack using the cannon with the cheval uh, against armoured vehicles. So for this I'm going to use automatic, short burst um, limiter, armour piercing incendiary and low fire rate. Uh, I'm going to also bring up my Abris so we can see exactly what we're doing here. Uh, targets are approximately at that waypoint. So uh, something you need to have mapped is the cannon select. Uh, in the real helicopter, that is actually a kind of flip-up um, gun trigger, basically, or a flip-down gun trigger, I think it is, really. Um, and until you flip that down, the cannon is not active. So if I go ahead and flip that down now, you can see that we get the symbology for the cannon. So whenever the cannon is selected, you will see the letter C on the left-hand side of the HUD. Um, the HUD will mostly be decluttered. You will get the cannon reticle here, just a circle with a dot. Uh, and then there'll be a reduced number of pitch bars displayed. I'm going to go ahead and turn off active pause, and we're going to get ourselves into the vicinity of the target area. Uh, and while I'm on my way there, I'm going to go ahead and uncage the cheval. And we're going to go ahead and take a little look at roughly where that target area is. Let's see if we can pick out one of those vehicles. Should be around about here, I think. Yep, there we go. There we go. I've got a lock. So we have a C and we have TA. That means that target is now being tracked. 
now the gun is actually going to automatically slew to keep the target um, focused, so to keep the gun on target. And um, while we're doing that, we have this box in the HUD. This is showing us the effective limits of the gun. So we need to keep the target circle within the limits displayed here in the HUD. If I go too far off to the right, uh, we will no longer be able to fire the gun. We'll get the flashing cross. We bring the target back into the correct area. Then the cannon uh, will be within limits and it will be possible to fire on the target once we're in range. So I'm going to bring us a little bit closer in. If I look down here... Uh, oh, actually, the laser's not on. That's why I'm not getting ranging. Laser on. And let's go ahead and press designate again. I've now got range. 5.2. So for an armoured target like this, like I said, we want to really have it uh, within about 1.5. Uh, and you'll also see that we have uh, the range ticking down around the outside of the uh, target reticle there. I'm going to reduce altitude a bit. And I could squeeze the trigger and fire off some rounds just now. But those are almost certainly going to fall short, or at the very least be ineffective. And we also have range confirmed here in the middle of the HUD. Oof, actually that was not too far off. Our altitude might have helped there. Let's try that again, see what we get. Oh wow, okay, actually we got hits. That is outside the the, the range that the uh, documentation tells us it should work. So that was a full pull of the trigger. We got our full 10 rounds there. Oh, they're firing back. Okay, that was hits. We're gonna get, we're gonna get struck here if we're not careful. So I'm actually gonna call off that attack because I fear, I think I did just get hit. Or was that the Schwal simply, uh, Yeah, actually, I took a hit. My Schwal is gone. <laughs> Brilliant. Yep, that was a good demonstration of why you should not overfly your target. Um, nonetheless, we now have the gun in boresight mode, so you'll see that the the, the cannon uh, pipper is now focused in the HUD, and it does not move to track the target. Um, so this is not what I was intending to do, but however, it could act as a good demonstration, number one, of why you should not do that, but then also how to make use of the cannon in its fixed mode. Let's come around again. I should probably have set these vehicles not to fire back. That would have been more sensible. We're almost certainly going to die trying to do this. There's too many of them, really. It's quite satisfying firing the cannon, but in this kind of an attack, it's almost certainly going to get us killed. And we come off again. So I actually, I scored some hits there. We did damage those. Uh, we damaged some of those uh, BMPs. So that was quite good. But I've now lost my Doppler nav system, which is another, uh, another serious bit of damage. And we're continuing to get pounded by these vehicles. So yeah, that shows you why you should not do this kind of thing. Uh, one more thing I'll demonstrate is the longer burst. So I've got it now in a medium burst. And let's hold it down. And we should note now that we get 20 rounds instead of 10. And uh, let's try going to a high rate of fire and demonstrate that. <laughs> and keep in mind that the armor piercing incendiary will um, bounce. Uh, you'll get quite a lot of ricochets there. Let's switch it to high explosive now. Lots of little explosions. 30 millimeter high explosive. This would be more useful against uh, troops, lightly skinned vehicles, and things like that. Oh, we're maybe flying a bit too fast. Yep, flashing V for high velocity. There you go. And so that's that's a, basically a full demonstration of the cannon, despite my very ineffective attack on those BMPs. I did get some hits. So yes, you have the option for manual or automatic employment. Uh, you've got short, 
which will give you 10 rounds. You've got medium and long, which will give you 20 in the, in the burst limiter. You've got high explosive, and you've got armor piercing and sendry, and you have high and low firing settings. And then you simply pull cannon select, and that will deselect the cannon and put you back into normal mode. It also note that master arm must be on, and when you're using the cheval, you probably are going to want it to turn on the laser. So that's me. I've pulled the trigger, the, the cannon select trigger just now, but I can't fire. I need master arm on, and then I got confirmation here of C, which means the cannon is selected and ready to fire. Quite an effective weapon. Uh, like I said, maximum range, 2,000 meters, uh, and maximum effective range against armor, 1,500. I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option, if you'd like to further support the channel, of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew. Uh, I really appreciate those who do. Big shout out to the current members of Deep Hack's Ground Crew, Harish Rajan, Leo Netzel, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdik Ertan, Veli Tapani Korpikanas, and Tiger Moto. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.